Welcome, Sawdust Nation, to the 73rd episode of the Sawdust Nation podcast with your hosts, Nat from Naps Naughty Works LLC, Josh from North Country Woodworking, and Nick from MPG Creations. Yo. Uh, oh, hey. Hey. Uh, we got a pretty good hey. episode for y'all today. Uh, we got some questions. We even posed a question to you all out there. Uh, and hopefully we get some, has some responses to share with you all, but I'll tell you what, I'm pretty excited to share the answer to the question that has been submitted. But before we get into what's in our shops and all that fun stuff, Nick, why don't you give us our sponsors? Well, let, let me get into it real quick with, uh, PWNCNC. They've got some amazing products over there. Check them out at PWNCNC.com. Most recently I have been using the Maglock, uh, Collar, collars for um, my dust hoses and it's made life a heck of a lot easier in the shop instead of taking a four inch hose off of a piece and having to tighten down that clamp every time so if you wish to put that stuff on your or put the maglock uh, uh, collars on your equipment or your hoses just head on over to daniel's website it's very accessible just search maglocks or search uh, um, like dust hoses and all that jazz, and it'll come right up. But for 10% off of your order, go ahead and use promo code Sawdust Nation. And that does include uh, pre order for spindles as well. So check them out, pwncnc.com. Next up, Total Boat. Thank you so much for your continued support. Total Boat has the epoxy hookup. If you are in the market for some uh, deep pour or fast curing, what do they call that? fast hardening or slow hardening epoxies, uh, you're in luck because Total Boat's got the goods. Uh, go to TotalBoat.com or hit them up on the big IG at Total Boat. Uh, they, they're very responsive. And if you want 10% off your order, go ahead and shoot us a DM at Sawdust Nation Podcast on the big IG. We will make sure to get you that promo code. And last but not least, thank you to JTEC Photonics. Um, Check them out, jtechphotonics.com, if you're looking for a diode laser. Um, But that being said, uh, you know, I didn't see this week. And Before we get into our shops, I didn't see anybody send us any pictures of any of their projects. Joey Stooplade actually did send us uh, photos of his completed project. Well, (laughs) I guess he wins because I didn't see any. (laughs) Well, we're not picking a winner until the 30th, so there's still time to do your entries. So. All right. Yeah. And uh, jo- Joey, if you hear us, send us like a regular message because I can't view it or save it ever. So so check it out, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We The last message I had on the last podcast beside my sign off was that we were going to have a contest and uh, submit to us pictures or video of your uh, most recent completed project that you're super proud of. And we'll do a uh, basically... Uh, judging and pick what i say two winners i don't even know i think we're gonna pick two winners and uh we'll, we're gonna find out uh we're gonna get something nice out to you but uh, that being said if there's only two people that submitted i guess you two winners you know you do the math but uh what's going on in your shop now enough with the contest enough with the sponsors enough with the the mumbo jumbo that i've been always i'm always spewing what's going on you know what we always go with nap let's go with josh josh what's in your shop man well, I have a lot of wood and some tools. All right, thanks, some Josh. Some sawdust, and that pretty much wraps up my week. All right, cool, Josh. Anyways, in my shot, no. Seriously, what's going on, man? What do we have going on? Um, I just got out the five mallets that were promised, and that's uh, minus would have been I think six, but someone didn't give me their logo on time, so I never got to engrave it. Um, so I'm going to have to uh, go back in the shop tonight, get that graved and set out. But uh, it's okay. It's going out to a fairly decent individual that you might know. Na- app. <clears throat> but uh, everyone else got their uh, their goodies or should begin their goodies. Go ahead, Nick. You got you got you did five of them. Yep. all in one week. Uh, wow. That's actually six. So did you so six complete? Like well, yeah. In- to be fair, um, before I got sick. I, I basically built them. I just had to, uh, you know, shine them up, get the handles in, and then kind of do some finishing touches. Um, but uh, like a graving in that. Um, so I have uh, Wim Designs. He, he's getting a mallet. 
Um, we have Ducky Mesquite. He won a contest uh, at the beginning of the month. He's getting a small mallet. We have Blackthorn Co- uh, Concepts. He's getting his promised mallet. Uh, it was from last month. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> little, Get them all out. A little behind on these. Um, we already yeah. mentioned uh, Nap. And then um, what was the last one? Oh, uh, AJ. Uh, he just did a giveaway for his 3K and uh, for Crafted and NJ. And I promised him a mallet as well. And I just bought a flag off AJ, by the way. Yeah. Uh, he said he was going to uh, mm-hmm. be sending you one here shortly. Um, <laughs> so I ordered it a year ago. Yeah, <laughs> it's I know. It's cool, though, because I knew, I knew he was backed up. Yeah, he's he's constantly backed up. And he's he did a really cool uh, feature on his latest Army flag. I don't know if you noticed or saw, but he did uh, the Army stripe. He did it camo, and it was pretty yeah. cool. I saw that. I saw that. It's pretty neat. Yeah, it's how neat. So um, did he paint that by hand? Yeah, or did it's he, all like, hand-painted. Oh. Wow. I wish we could ask him, you know? Well, you know, maybe. Be able to. Maybe someday we can have him on the podcast, but. uh, You never know. You never know. But uh, going back to the the mallets, I actually have more mallets to make. I have a United States Marine Corps uh, 53 mallet I'll be making here shortly. That's actually on my Etsy because um, I learned with the Army guys here that it's just easy to throw it up there. And when they need an order, they fill out the paperwork and everything on there. They pay me. And instead of having to go through like four different people. So I got them set up and uh, they got their first order in. I have to go ahead and make that. It's already designed. I just got to make it. What's your turnaround on those on Etsy, by the way? Because it asks you what, like when you make your listing, what the turnaround is. Well, for the, made to order. that particular uh, item, it's uh, it's it's local. So I could drop to pick it up. So it's two weeks. Um, and they're not going to get a shipping notification because, well, it's not going anywhere. Yeah, so I've had that issue before where I've had a local uh, order. Does it reflect as a local order, or does because Etsy won't let you close out the uh, the order until there's a tracking number? Yes, but uh, on you get to choose your own shipping method, and I I, uh, I forget what I chose, but it basically signed that portion off essentially. So um, if you choose the United States Post Office, you know it's just not it's going to disappear in thin air. So. Well, that's why I go to the UPS store. <laughs> Uh, so uh, me and UPS were, yeah. we're getting a divorce. Okay, so Ooh, that sounds like a nasty yeah. one yeah, too. Nap will tell you all about it when his shop's up. Yeah. But uh, long story short, guys, I have uh, three more mallets to make: two uh, t- two footers, one one footer, and they're going to uh, the different branches here on the base. Um, so I actually have both of those up on Etsy. <laughs> <laughs> the Marines are the only ones that have used the link so far. The Army seem not to have been able to figure it out yet. Um, but it's all good. Um, <laughs> don't choke there, Nap. Um, right, but the Marines, they write, they they filled their order form out in crayon, but it was still easy to read. Yeah, they sent me the screenshot. <laughs> They're going to come find you. <laughs> it's all good. Um, I got a, another liquor box. It's going to be a wine box, and it's uh, going out the 28th. Um, it's going to be a little bit different than I normally do. It's going to have a little bit more pizzazz to it and you'll see why. Yeah. What's it called? It, the wine uh, box, cradle box, liquor box. It's almost, uh, I, I, you should call them a liquor box. <laughs> I think that would be, it would be inappropriate in this case. Um, it's going to have keepsake, pur- keepsake bottle. Case. Yeah, keeps a bottle. There you are. It's going to have a purple fabric. It's going to have some handles on it. It's going to have some uh, some interesting engraving on it as well. And that same uh, gift is going to be paired with, it's a double going away. So they ordered the wine um, box for me for one individual. Then they ordered a challenge coin flag from me for the other individual. So I'm making two gifts for both individuals and uh so that's pretty cool let's do the same day and uh you know i'll knock those out real quick um the shadow box dilemma i have going on now is talking to nap before the podcast the shadow box dilemma i have is um i have individual that gave me all their stuff for the shadow box i have sitting in the house but they gave uh basically the invoice to their squadron and the squadron hasn't paid me yet Uh oh 
And then I have a shadow box, which uh, is coming from an individual for their husband. And they paid me half, which was part of the deal. And they haven't given me any of their stuff yet. So I can make a shadow box based off what I have now. It just won't be for the right individuals. Um, I'm just kind of halfway in both of those projects waiting to hear back from the clients. Um, how, how are you going to make those shadow boxes, if you don't mind me asking? Like, you know, mean, any pretty special features in them? Because I, I, I know how I make mine. I'm just curious on how you make yours. So these are going to be our first two. Um, so one is a firefighter uh, shadow box. And it's going to be the basic square design with the um, United States Air Force and the um, American flag in there separated into their own corner. And then um, it's going to have like a coin rack below that um, where the coins can sit. Um, I'm trying to make sure I remember which one because they're just similar in some ways. And then um, in the center, it's going to have like the firefighter like um, design. Maltese cross. Yes. Thank you. And on each side is going to be their patches and then their ranks. And it's just, it's going to, it looks so nice. I designed it in uh, Lightburn as like uh, just kind of like a, a sketch to get to the client so they understand how I'm going to kind of lay things out and how it's going to be presented. And uh, they really liked it. I think it's going to be a great design. And then for the other individual, it's going to be the Master Sergeant uh, Chevron. And it's going to be, it's basically the shadow box with the Master Sergeant Chevron. Uh, it's going to be fairly large, and they're going to try to fit in. Half of it's going to be like the blue attire, and then it's going to go into the different uniforms they wore and the decorations, patches, and ranks. So, um, And those will actually have some challenge coins in a well, and I asked them if they want them um, sitting in there or if they want them glued down, and they want them glued to the fabric. Um, so when that time comes, we're going to be sitting there and I'm going to have them basically tell me which side they want and I'm going to make sure it's, you know, exactly how they want it. That way we're not messing around with, you know, having to take a challenge coin off the fabric, but, uh, for special features, I don't have anything crazy. Um, so far there's not going to be any lights or strobes or any speakers that come off the side and start playing the air force song or anything crazy, but, uh, uh, it's yeah, pretty much. Uh, it's just one of those things where uh, you know it's my first two, so I am a tad bit nervous about working uh, on these for people. But um, I know two people that have done them, so I can always ask them and see how their uh, techniques will line up with what I have in mind. So there's that. Um, and then lastly, the only thing I got uh, out of the shop here recently was uh, another. Uh, four inch coin for the military working dogs. Uh, they ordered it and uh, out the door. So um, Etsy's come along. I'm getting more uh, stuff on there, allowing me to uh, get more orders through there and stuff like that, which is increasing my rating and uh, just getting my name out there a little bit more. So, but the shop's clean and uh, honestly, just feeling good to get back in there and start doing some woodworking, actual woodworking. With that, I don't know which one you get. You guys both had a very interesting week. So who wants to go next? Nick, what do you got going on in your shop? Well, um, as of right now, I am carving, carving out carbon fiber because I am putting, uh, I've got three carbon fiber uh, plaques, inlaid plaques that I'm making. And uh, those will be done hopefully by Friday as far as dry and ready to ship. I I was on a break today at work and somebody just was just like, hey, I want one of those for going away and I need it next week. And I was like, oh, rush fee. <laughs> it's not like I could just like whip them out. I don't know if that's the right thing to say. I, it's not like I could just like turn them out in a day. There's a lot more that goes into it than just than just like a regular carved out tab that I have to like just throw some paint on and sand off, put the finish, like the hail seal on, on. Mm -hmm. I actually have to do a lot of like measurements and, and fitting and stuff like that for the inlay. But that being said, uh, I guess the, you know, that, that rush fee is kind of worth it to get off, get off my rear end and, and work a little faster. I have, uh, quite a few projects ready to ship. 
I just have not had time to take him to the UPS. Um, Nap came over last night. I saw that. Brought the yeah, it came over. We had a uh, we did some glue ups, some laser etching. Oh, and we were making coasters, but um, we actually last past Saturday we went to Green Harley Davidson up in New Braunfels, Texas, and we sold a few items up there. Uh, they invited us up for a military appreciation. Uh, their military appreciation ride. Um, it wasn't like an overwhelming success. And the only reason I know that we didn't sell any bigger items is because if you're on a Harley, the last thing you want to do is be like carrying a flag home or, you know, it's just one of those things that's kind of bulky and not uh, conducive to riding a motorcycle. So we get it. It's all good. I'm going back tomorrow night for the men's night or that's, I'm going back Thursday night for the men's night at, at Green Harley Davidson. I'll have the rest of my items still on display and some new items. And uh, yeah, man, I've got a, I'm waiting on a arrival of a uh, shipment of cast acrylic. I ordered. So like the first wave that I bought was just like a couple sheets to get my, you know, to get my feet wet, get, get the cuts down to see how, how the laser responded to it. And I made that one, um, special forces crest but the rest of them coming i actually have plans for them since now i've got it down i've started designing files in lightburn to just for like cast acrylic uh designs um obviously um there's going to be like backers and stuff on them but uh the backers will either be wood or or the hdu what i would like to do is end up getting some core foam but that stuff is so expensive holy cow um as far as as far as the rest of my my stuff goes, um, uh, let's see here. I broke my finger. I probably should have mentioned that first. The reason I broke my finger was because I had I wasn't a shop injury at all. Um, it was a uh, domestic violence from my four year old. He he jumped out of nowhere and tackled me, and I fell backwards. I don't think it was intended to be a violent attack but i fell backwards in the whoa the whoa ER. whoa i heard something about a mannequin and a traffic cone no 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 it was a manatee a traffic right, cone a manatee, and a yeah. oh manatee and a five gallon i think that's a federal manatee i think that's a federal offense mess with a manatee no, no. it was it was a manatee a traffic cone and a five uh 55 gallon drum of ky jelly and i had to go to the hospital so Anyway, long story short, that's all I got going on, guys. You guys don't want to hear any more about my baloney going on. Uh, uh, let's hear what Nap's got going on because I know uh, he's got some interesting stuff to go uh, go on. I wouldn't call it too interesting. Uh, it's more or less uh, life happenings that have been more interesting than anything. But uh, So, yeah, I went to Nick's yesterday. Just did, did a glue up. Realistically, it was just trying to blow some steam off. Um, we'll just say when life happens, life happens, especially when it has to do with your children. Okay. So all my makers out there, they got children. You probably understand where I'm coming from right now. Um, but yeah, just got, you know, dealing with some stuff with that right now. So my motivation's kind of not really been there, uh, to do a whole lot of stuff. So I went to Nick's yesterday. He actually invited me over cause he knew there was something wrong, which to me, it tells me he's a pretty decent friend cause he knew there was something wrong and even got, he was just. He just needed some epoxy pigment. I knew I knew that's what he yeah, needed. Yeah, that's exactly what I needed. Uh, and then you know, I got like, you know, folks like Josh that message me on daily too. They're always asking me if I'm doing all right, seeing how I'm doing, what's going on in my shop and whatnot. So, you know, that right there just says like our community is pretty tight considering, you know, we look out for each other. But as far as what's actually going on in the shop, so yes, the Harley Davidson tent was not necessarily a full success, but I did sell a couple things uh, I think afterwards um from just other folks that saw some stuff on facebook which is pretty cool no but i do have uh a fair that i'm attending on sunday with with another maker uh it seems like a lot of makers are carrying me on their back these days like hey nap you got some stuff to sell come on out by the way wait thanks for the invite there nap i appreciate it man i'm not gonna (laughs) invite you to something that i didn't get personally invited to by the by the people no it's it's for the people it's cool of the people. By the people. <laughs> um, What's it called? I'm gonna look it up. And I'm, gonna, uh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna crash it. That's fine. It's uh it's in Poteet, Texas. What's that? It's in, po- it's in Poteet, Texas. A P O T E T. Okay. 
So I'm going to set my, my table right in front of your table. <laughs> that's fine. Uh, that's fine. Um, but yeah, so anything I really didn't sell this time, uh, it'll go to that. And then after that fair, considering, let's see. So this Sunday is what? The, the 21st. So the following week, uh, because I won't be taking any new orders in December. I'm only taking in November and then anything due in December I'll do or finish. And that way I can kind of have a break. But then that'll also be the birth of my Etsy because I'll be putting it together a portfolio and actually be able to put stuff on there. Yeah. Welcome to America. You know? Uh, but yeah, so I'm going to do that just because, you know, orders are slowing down. Okay. Because people are turnover starting to happen uh, in BMT. So folks don't necessarily know who I am. Uh, just kind of word of mouth still. And word of mouth will eventually start to die as more people, you know, shift out, which is completely fine with me. Uh, it's kind of cool going into a small lull so I can come back refreshed and then just start smashing stuff out of the shop. Um, but I, I still, <laughs> they're looking at me funny. But I am playing catch up this week. I'm going to try to finish this hat case this week. I'm looking at a way to mount. Let's see, so I got a bunch of coins here. Uh, I was not expecting this many coins from the individual. I'm finally now counting them. It's actually quite a few. So I got one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine different coins that are going to go inside my hat case that I've never done before. Uh, I think I'm going to make a small, so there's a spot on there where there's two uh, pegs that hold the pedestal normally where I put the plaque on the strap. Uh, I'm actually just going to do, I'm going to do that, but instead I'm going to use that as a base to make a framed out coin display with uh the plaque and a, the strap in there uh something along those lines uh i think it's gonna be the easiest way to do it because if i do like the whole coin rack deal and try to glue them in there i think that's gonna look kind of messy uh so i'll just do some coin inlays we'll, so we'll see what happens um let's see what else gonna finish epoxying this hat press back here i gotta pour epoxy on this first badge tonight um i'm probably gonna clean my shop so my shop is not clean after preparing for that that show that i didn't go to bed until like 4 30 in the morning for uh we'll just say it was like a tornado went off in there because once i got going i got going i just couldn't stop so oh, that's another thing we went to that that thing at the harley davidson and naps like i went to bed at four o'clock this morning i'm like bro it's like 8 30 now yeah <laughs> you literally got less than four hours of sleep yeah, but you know what? The stuff is done now, so now I have stock, essentially, and I don't have to really, like, hammer home anything this week, which is kind of cool. I actually have, like, time to, like I said, make things up. Uh, I don't know how you never hammer anything home without one of Josh's mallets. I know. Mm. It's my fault, though. It's my fault. <laughs> um, but I, did, I have been getting a couple orders. Um, I actually – it's kind. Of, I got an interesting order today. Never thought this would happen someone's having their Christmas party for the military training instructor world. And they asked for a, they're going to buy a gift receipt or a gift certificate for a hat press for me. They're like, Hey, we want, oh, we cool. want to give this away to our, uh, our Christmas party. So if you, what's your, you know, lower end, like, and lower end still really nice. Right. So make it's Oak, unfortunately, but whatever. Uh, Are you going to let them upgrade if they want to? Yeah. If it felt like they use it and they say, Hey, I'd rather have like a cherry one. I'll just say, hey, here's the difference on it. So it'll just be a hundred fifty dollar yeah. like gift certificate, essentially. You can always upsell it too, you know. The leather seats, you know, <laughs> leather interior, leather interior. You got this baby. You can fit a whole bunch of hats in this baby. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, you know, I, that was kind of an interesting one. So that I'm actually pretty excited about that one, uh, just because I've never had anybody ask me for like a gift certificate before. Um, Would you, hey? Would you so would you sell more gift certificates if if you were if uh, people wanted them? Yeah, I mean honestly, it's kind of cool because it's like I know it's there, so I can kind of start prepping. So like for example, with this hat press being uh, a part of it, I should have blanks anyway, so I can easily carve you know from whatever. But I'll make a blank oak hat press, and if they upgrade, then I'll just you know go from there. But I'll anticipate an oak one and just have it ready. What if people were like just pouring in buying like five hundred, six hundred thousand dollar gift cards, and then like ten years from now, they're like, "Hey, so you put you put an expiration on the gift cards for like a year or two years, and then all that money they pour in, and then ten years when they come back saying, "Hey, I want a walnut rocking chair," you can be like, "No, man, gift cards 
expired. Can can you make a gift card expire? Absolutely, happens all, all the time. time. <clears throat> yep. They do. Yep. I didn't. I didn't know that. So now your you subway know. gift card you've had for like three years is probably expired by now. Um, <laughs> Christmas is coming. Yeah. Regift that sucker. Exactly. <laughs> make it someone else's issue. Hey, we have a giveaway. <laughs> oh. Hey, you know, I did forget something. Can I can I go ahead and and this has to do with you, Nap. Can I go ahead and and speak on that? Yeah. So uh, at work, uh, the students that I instructed on the last class, they got me a plaque, and they made it. They had it made specially for me with all of my information and all the the class information and stuff, and they got it from Nap. So. I was like walking into work and I was like, hey, Nap, what's up? And he's like shuffling down the hallway like a penguin trying to hide <laughs> it from me. He's not saying anything. I'm like, well, yeah, good day to you too, bro. Thanks. You know? So, yeah. Gave it to me at lunchtime. It was a good, it was a beautiful plaque. I should have posted a picture of it, but it's sitting on my wall at, uh, it's actually in my burnt, my burnt. No, I'm playing. That'd be, that'd be messed up. Listen, so on that plaque, right? So the students actually contacted me like two weeks before they graduated. And I said, hey, listen, because of certain rules here, I can't do business with you until after you graduate. And, and that's just how it is, especially because I knew the individual ordering it. Um, so I was like, hey, just wait till after class and then we'll, we'll handle it. Because I know what Nick likes as far as woods are concerned and I know what finish he likes. So not only did I use my Merca sander to sand the live edge off this thing to make it nice and smooth and all that so it wasn't ridiculous looking, but I used, uh, what you call it, Odie's oil and cherry wood to make this thing. With amb- Odie's oil is amazing. So all the things Nick likes, I put into this plaque. And, uh, of course, Josh is over here judging and laughing and probably asking when we're going to get married or something. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> no, we're, no, same, same. No, no. Um <laughs> Just want to be the well, best yeah. man. <laughs> but I no, I gotta say though, that's like the first time that anybody's ever like, like any. I've been instructing for a while, and usually students just bring you booze <laughs> if they, if they like that's you, fine. right? Now, I mean, I, it's been fine before, right? But I've never actually had something made for me, so it was kind of cool. That's awesome. That speaks a lot about what you're doing for those guys. Yeah, all I did was flunk a bunch of them. It's no, I'm playing. <laughs> it's yeah, they don't know it yet, but I got my plaque. <laughs> the quote on it was pretty good. It was like, uh, what is it? The problem with being a leader is you don't know if you're being followed or chased. It's true. I was like, that makes that makes actually some decent sense. Bravo, Confucius say. Uh, <laughs> Who sits, but, in uh, church, sits on pew. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> But to finish off the shop, really, boys, I'm just, you know, I'm kind of just getting myself back together. I, I, I'm i not going to lie. I've never really had things take me down and out. But th- this particular thing with my son and everything has kind of been, it's been a little rough, especially when it's other adults, you know, dealing with my kid and all this other stuff and don't know how to handle, our four, handle a four-year-old child. But anyways, I think that's about all I got going on in the shop. I'm hoping to sell a bunch of stuff Sunday, so wish me luck. You will, man. I think you're going to do pretty good. But, uh, yeah, so we want to get to some uh, some question action. <coughs> yeah, what's up? Uh... Hey, so I, I, got, I got one for you real quick. Oh, boy. Confucius says, man who wants a pretty nurse must be patient. Wow. Get it? Yeah. Huh? Huh? All right, what's the question? So Dave Snyder, 74, wrote in. Question for the podcast. Which tool in your shop has caused you the most frustration? And Nick. My my brain. My brain. It's it's one of the most I, I mean it's that's a cop out answer, I guess, but it, your the brain is the biggest tool you have you have. You in are your the shop. biggest tool. Without your Goodbye. brain, you can't operate <laughs> everything else. Anyway, long story short, um it's just one of those things where if you get complacent or you, you start making mistakes and all that stuff, that's my that's my A answer. My B answer would be the uh, track saw from Makita <laughs> that I was I fought and fought that I thing. Still Finally, don't I don't understand why you had so many issues with that. I've had mine for I don't know like two years, maybe two and a half. Have no issues with it. I think oh. I know what it was. You started off a Fez tool, 
Then he went to Makita yeah. and then realized like the, the differences. I've never had another track saw. So that could be why I, I enjoy it so much and use it as much as I do. But you've uh, done messed up AA Ron. Yep. You sure started lower quality and moved your way up. Anyway, that's all I got. Yeah, but yours, man. So I hate to say this, but it's my damn so I don't have a track saw. It just so happens to be my circular saw. Oh. And oh and you can only imagine why. If I were to give a second one, because I don't use it as much as I, I would like to, because it sucks, um, I'd say my Brad nailer. And this is why I hate okay. and this is why I hate my Brad nailer. Because not only the Brad's big, it causes a lot of work as far as filling and sanding and all that stuff. But also, brads tend to split wood if you don't brad it the right way, which causes even more work. Or sometimes brads have a mind of their own. What the hell is that? Uh, I got like a random sound in my head. So I don't know if that's from one of you, but but they'll like do their own thing. Like it'll curve up, and then I'm like, oh well, there I just ruined this frame. So cool. To fix that though, because I don't use a brad nailer anymore. I stopped using them. I might actually just sell them and get rid of them. Pin. Yep. I have a 23 gauge pin nailer now. Uh, Nick, Nick decided to uh, show me his pin nailer, and I was like, I like this. But then he told me which one. I think it's the Metalbo. Is that what it is? Mm-hmm. So I it's have like a, a greenish gray and black. Yep. I got yep, 23 perfect. gauge Metalbo uh, air nailer. I was going to get the battery operated one, but I was like, 230 versus 160. I've got the air compressor. I'm just going to get that for now. For now. Okay. I'll get a battery powered one eventually. I just, I'm fine with the air air, air one. It, it's fine for me for now. It works perfectly fine. I have nothing to say against it, but there has been some issues with like trying, you know, trying to maneuver it around. And you got the cord, and it's it's a cop out complaint. It's really not you know huge or anything. It's just one of those things that you know you might want to consider. It's really not that bad though. Uh, they have a battery powered one, but the battery powered one's like three hundred bones. But Something I like mean, that. eventually, it's worth it if you. So here's the problem with the battery powered one that I would see is a if I leave it laying down somewhere, it's not very big. Poof, it's gone. <laughs> At least with the air compressor, I have a hose attached to it. I just follow the hose, right? I guess for a bigger shot, that might be an issue. I just trip over and I find it. <laughs> yeah, right. No, no joke. I literally almost died with that hose in my in my garage, among the other hoses I have laying around from from dust extraction. Because I'm telling you what, boys, I'm not hanging any of those hoses up because I'm leaving soon. I'm not going to go through all that butt pain to hang all this stuff up. Just to have to take it all down. Just get a reel. Well, the reel's fine, but I'm talking more even along the lines of my dust collection hoses because they're just... Oh, okay. Yeah, the other thing, I just I deal with that. I just step on it, almost die a couple times, and then I'm fine. Because then I realize it's there, and I stop tripping over it like an idiot. (laughs) Fair enough. Go ahead, Josh. What's uh, what's your most hated tool? I'm not going to say hated. I will say frustrating tool. Um, And I'm going to have to say my original diode laser. So... When I first got that diode laser, I had never touched a CNC or a laser before. So I had to basically, I was learning G code. <laughs> that was fun. Um, I had to basically learn the ins and outs because there was no support because I got an Amazon generic laser. Uh, I mean, there was a brand behind it, but like I bought it and the brand disappeared like the next day. So um, everything Don't worked say. on it. Uh, it was just, there. Was this, the instructions were kind of garbage. Um, to get it going, it was uh, pretty difficult to get going. I had to learn a lot of the, like the basic uh, mechanics of the laser. And finally, when I did that, I ran into light burn. <laughs> it changed the game. Um, but, you know, going forward, I still get random problems with it. Um, recently, I was doing those uh, mallets engraving, and I throw down Blackthorn Customs. And, you know, last time I touched this thing, it was working fine starts uh, engraving and I'm seeing his logo. If you don't know it, there's like uh, three columns kind of like going at a 30 degree angle up and the columns are going like this, <laughs> like dancing. Oh, they're waving. Yeah, they're waving. So I'm like, okay, stop. I sand it down. And uh, thankfully 
you know, in the past have had these uh, different uh, problems before, so I know how to fix them. The first go-to is to clean the tracks. Sometimes there's gunks that get in the track, and you just got to clean them, and that helps. The second is uh, tightening the uh, the belts themselves. They will eventually slip, and uh, you just need to tighten them a little bit. And a little bit of, uh, you know, tightening and then doing some test runs, I got to work it perfect again. I remember the first time that happened, and it was, uh, I think it was last year, Christmas. And the laser's been working fine, no issues, no issues. And then I have um, a Christmas plate with, like, Santa's coming, and it has, like, milk and cookies and all this stuff here. I know I cut out the plate, I put it under there, and it starts, I have waves. And I'm like, I can't get this out, so I sand it down. And I have waves again, so I sand it down. And at this point, it went from like three and a quarter to like half, and I'm like, I can't get this out. So I have like a new plate. I try to fix it. And it was just this back and forth thing. And it was before I had the Glowforge. So I really only had one option. I tried to uh, engrave it, and it didn't really turn out that great. And I tried to or uh, carve it, and it turned out that great. Um, so I tried a whole bunch of different things. Finally got it working. kind of learned my mistake. But if anything in this shop gave me the most run for my money as far as a learning curve and getting it to work right and then even maintaining it, it's been that uh, dial blazer. So <laughs> I definitely uh, can relate to his question about the most frustrating tool. But uh, I know a lot about lasers now because of it. So I guess in the long run, I did benefit from it. So you're better for it. Absolutely. If, if you're done, Josh, uh, I don't mean to like cut you off or anything. I just like randomly had this thought. So, okay, Nick and I have encountered one of uh, those people in the maker community that believes that, you know, their opinion is like the only one that matters type deal uh, as far as flag making is concerned. And we we, we had a little fun. Uh, nothing inappropriate, right? We just said a bunch of random dumb stuff. Like... <laughs> We get like the sanding. No, process, yeah. no. Like the sanding process on a flag and some other fun stuff. It, it was good. Uh, I Start at 30, de- 30 grit and you only go up to 100 and you should be good, right? No, no, no. You got to go to 600 and then go to 80 because that's how you get the curl in the wood. Oh, my God. That, oh, dude. Oh. <laughs> did you read my. Did you read my. Oh, my, did you add Josh to that page? I will. I'll Holy add him so you cow. can see it. But so it all started, right? So I put the flags up because I was in this flag makers group in San Antonio. Okay, cool. I'm just like, you know, I'm going to put this up there because I've never posted here really. And I feel like I'm going to add to their community and post my flags, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And my borders are a little deep, right? There, I think it's two and a 16th, two inches and a 16th. The reason why it's like that is so I can put my two sawtooth hangers on the back and have it flush mounted up against the wall. So it's offset. Okay, but then there's a little extra, and the extra is there, so I can either A, add badges to it if the customer that buys it wants it, or I can, which I didn't put in these in these ones, but coin racks, and generally speaking, my coin racks go around that bottom row. Mm-hmm. This individual proceeded to say, do you think your borders are taking away from the flag? Because uh, they look kind of big. And I'm like, first thoughts was, okay, well, thank you for your criticism, but thanks for even mentioning that they look nice, a-hole. I was going to say something else because I'm feeling some. Sort That's of... not nice. We don't use that language here. Uh, uh, and so he, I was like, so I was politically correct. And I said, thank you for your constructive criticism. Uh, and that was about it. Have a nice day. Essentially is what it was. So then I proceeded to, you know, I was like, no, no, I know someone that could help me with this. So a few other posts, others posted about a frame. And I was like, Nick, this dude commented, on my flags and just being one of those people. It's just, just critic. Everyone wants to be a critic till it's time to do real world worker things. Cause you know, flags are awesome unless you're doing wavy flags like AJ is. I hate to say it, but flags are relatively easy, right? Like I, I'm not, I, and most people in the maker community probably could agree. Okay. Unless you're doing stuff like Mike from better Woodco, or if you're like, if you're doing AJ stuff. That stuff, they, they do some really nice stuff. So I get, oh, and then honestly, most of my inspiration comes from from Mike. Like, because like the only reason why I champed for my stripes was I saw one of his things come across my page one time. I was like, oh yeah, that's actually a really good idea. So that's the reason why. So thanks, Mike, for, you know, making some awesome stuff that I can get some inspiration from. But so this individual goes to say, well, what was it? Something along the lines, I was talking about the borders, not the fact that you add one, blah, 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 blah. 
Uh, I was like, well, the reason why I had borders is because of X, Y, and Z. So he proceeds to think I'm a snowflake and uh, was like, oh, I guess people don't like constructive criticism anymore. I probably shouldn't have said anything. My bad. I was like, okay. So part of me was like, I'm about to destroy this dude. Like, I, I really wanted to rip this guy up. But I was like, you know what? No, I won't do that. So instead, I'll read you what I said to this man. Uh, because I felt like it was very good. It was so like I so said, much drama. It is. It's a lot of drama, but it's it, it's relevant though because people do this, and it's like instead of just trying to cut someone down, give them their criticism, and then give a compliment on it because it doesn't look like crap. You pretty much made me feel like my flags look like crap, like just by saying the frames are terrible or whatever. So I just go. So like I said, thanks for the criticism for my first comment. Uh, second off, I mentioned it's wide because of the coin rack bottom. You must have missed that. So I don't know how or why you took it the way you did. Then borders are great when you are only making something that is 2D and focuses on being a sign. I was merely explaining why mine were larger. The border adds depth and adds to coin rack functionality and blah, 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 blah. Uh, so pretty much told him, nice 2D flag sign, bro. When you make something that's a little more 3D-ish, you can come talk to me. And then Nick proceeds to add stuff and we went in on him. I, I wasn't even going in on the guy. I was just making – I was talking stupid like – Okay, so I'm going to cut Nick off here and say I know Nick and I know him on Facebook and on pages. And from what I've heard, he was being very gentleman-like. He was. He was. <laughs> See that little grin on his face right now? He knows <laughs> so, to tell the truth. <laughs> So, so first off, I was a brand new member on this page. It's not like I had any interactions with anybody before. So if I just start popping off on somebody for, you know, a mild disrespect, whatever, right? So I just thought it'd be cool to go on there and make it sound like I knew what I was talking about, but absolutely just botch the entire commentary of how I got, how, like I start, like the way I get things working right is I get my, I get my wood from a pallet from the pottery barn <laughs> and then <laughs> i start at six thousand or i start at uh what did i say 600. 600 and i make i start sanding at 600 uh, grit and then i make my way to 80 and that's how it gets that gloss on on the surface <laughs> and then i'm not gonna go any further into it but it was like the exact opposite of what an actual woodworker would do so it was good. That was the irony, and it was funny. I thought it was funny. And using, is this still up? Yeah, and using E89 to pop the grain. No, I didn't say that. That was me. I, I said something else to pop the grain, but regardless, <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. He never commented, by the way. I think he got the hit. <laughs> so, okay, in this basic, like, you're on social media. You, you know, people will say whatever they want, unfortunately. But I mean, like the community we're in, it's okay to go on someone's uh, thing and say, "Hey, you know, I saw this, whatever." But at least be nice about it. Be like, "Hey, you know, the flag looks great. I did notice the border is a little bigger than what I would have made. Um, is there a reason for it?" Now, that's not a, a, like a, "Hey, dude, your borders are way too big, and I think you should remove them immediately." That's a, "Hey, you know, I'm curious why did you do that?" Because you have very valid reasons on why you did so, what you did. So there's a there's a good if you're trying to give anybody any constructive criticism, right? Some people call it the the good bad good. Uh, other people call it other people call it the crap sandwich. You're gonna give them the good, like hey, that's a beautiful flag. Uh, I'm not too keen on the border. Maybe it's a little too wide, but you know what? The finish is absolutely stunning. Why did you? Uh, what what's the reason for the large border? You know. And I listen. I, I'm not. I wasn't looking for this dude to powder my butt. All right, because I get it. I can take criticism, but it's just like the simple fact of, bro, you literally just attacked one feature. Didn't even say nothing else. Like, so here's another thing, though. If you know the person, like if I know Nap, and and I was like, Nap, that looks jacked up. You're, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. it's different. It's though. different. Yeah. It's a hundred percent different because I am. I don't want to say quality controlling his stuff. But I'm just – or quality checking. I'm just well, we you know, are. giving him an honest opinion. Well, yeah, I'm giving him an honest opinion of – because I know the caliber maker he is. And if something doesn't turn out, I'm going to tell him. Oh, Josh said that Nap – know or he knows the caliber maker Nap is too. It's not very not very high. Oh, thank you. But he's giving him a good bad good right now. Hold on. What are you saying, Josh? I'm just saying low, low. <laughs> no, dude. And that's, that's the, the big difference is like, you know – 
a lot of people we talk about on Instagram with the people that text us, message us. I send things to both of you gentlemen be like, hey, can you see the mistake? Hey, what could I have done better? Hey, what do you think of this? And then we say it's crap. But I mean, it's still, you know, I'm going to ask their opinion. Um, and I expect that from them. That's why I send it to them. But, you know, just be courteous when you're talking to people on any of the social media platforms, because you don't know who's actually, you know, watching you. Um, if you're trying to be, if you're trying to do a podcast like we are, or if you're trying to be an influencer, get people, you know, sponsors and stuff like that, that one comment can later bite you in the butt. So just be a good person and good things will come your way. If you're going to go out there and trash people, well, guess what? Bad things are going to come your way. So, yeah. I mean, I, like I said, I think I would have been fine had this, the, the whole, like, I guess people can't take constructive criticism comment come out. But I was like, all right, dude, you don't know me. Shut your mouth. Like, at least look at my page before you make comments. <laughs> you know, take me out to dinner first before you try to serve me. <laughs> have you ever have you ever had somebody just comment on your stuff and just absolutely trash it? No, actually, I haven't. No, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to Josh. I'm sorry. I should have addressed Josh first. Josh, have you ever had anybody comment on like your stuff and been like, you know, that's like that looks like trash or whatever? No, actually, in, or the equivalent. I haven't. Um, I have made a couple mistakes, and I've had people message me privately, be like, "Hey, did you see this?" Um, but I mean, those are the people I was talking about. Like, whatever they see, I expect them to tell me. Um, yeah, I have actually had. Not to this point, anyone actually trashed me on a post. I have a lot of promote on comments, though. Oh, yeah. What's up with that? I, I don't get all know. these spam comments. So, whatever. Yeah. Um, but, you know, this kind of segues a little bit into uh, I did a post on our Patreon and asked our, actually, it was open to the public, but uh, most of the Patreons that we, uh, that follow us, or engaging with us actually answered. And the question was uh, highlighted in tools. What's the top three tools in your shop? Let us know below. And we had a couple people respond. And uh, before we get into that, I just was curious, uh, gentlemen, what's your top three tools that you would consider an uh, absolute necessity, necessity, absolute necessity in your shop? So you want to go nap? Sure. So I know we did a kind of small segment out of this before based on like price. I think we did like 150 and below once upon a time. I'm not even saying price. I'm saying but in your shop right if, now, the top three tools. If I gave my top three tools right now, one is the saw stop. That that saw literally will save your fingers. And it, it cuts clean. It's it's powerful. Okay. I mean, other than his broken finger. And actually, Nick, if you hit that on the saw stop, you know your hose, right? Like you're definitely going to trip that thing. <laughs> So uh, careful. I won't even get a nick on my finger though. Cause <laughs> <laughs> a nick won't get a nick. On, on it's a iron finger. I might get a spark. That's right. Uh, so the saw stop being one, two, uh, a new tool that I should have had, I think, from the beginning, and that's my jet, my jet bandsaw. I, I I can't tell you like, okay, first of all, I, I was a dumb dumb and tried to send some crap through my planer that was too small, and I should have just used the bandsaw. Nick knows what I'm talking about because he may or may not have also tried the same thing. And uh, they didn't come out quite the way they should have. So instead, I, ban- I used a bandsaw and resawed some stuff. And then my third tool, you know, I would say CNC, but if we're going traditional uh, ish type woodworking, honestly, clamps. I know it's not like a, a very, uh, what is it? Oh, you forgot to bring my clamps today, bro. I did because they're still attached to the wood. <laughs> um, he, he took he took a glue up home last night with all my clamps on it. <laughs> I was like, bring him to work tomorrow. I totally forgot. I'll, I'll, I'll set them in the, I'll get them ready tonight. But uh, but yeah, but clamps in general, be just because even though they're, they could be, well, relatively expensive depending on the size, uh, but also could be relatively inexpensive. And they're probably one of the most useful tools I have in the shop. So it's true. It's true. Good Are answer. we going traditional? Any, I only did any that. tools. I only did that because not everyone has a CNC and not everyone will be able to. I know this is not taking a shot, but afford a CNC. So I went with stuff that um, people might buy. I mean, I know a saw stops not cheap either, but I'm going to go with something that everybody might buy. Here's a $6,000 saw. <laughs> yeah. Hey, if it means safety. All right. So, uh, I'm going to go with the CNC, the CO2 laser, 
And, uh, you know, I want to go with the table saw, but without a planer, I don't think I could use the CNC. I mean, I guess I could, but if I'm using like, if I'm trying to get things flat fast instead of running flat, flattening passes on a CNC, I think the planer and, and a sled is like absolutely one of the most, one of my best friends, especially for glue ups and all that stuff, man. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to be like nap. I'm going to say the planer, CNC, and the CO2 laser are probably the best, my favorites. So how about you, Josh? Hmm. Um, so it's going to be the bandsaw, a router, and uh, in this case, I think a table saw. But yeah, uh, those will be my three. I think with a router, you could basically do everything a CNC does. CNC does just slower uh, bandsaw because, well, you could do a lot with a bandsaw. I would love to see you do the, the moving plunges with a V-bit with a router. Well, I didn't say it would be easy. <laughs> Stop it. I, I'm being... I'm being uh, so, hey, have you guys ever heard of the Shaper? I yes. Have. That So for those of us, so those of the listeners who don't know what the Shaper is, look it up. It's uh, actually Festival owns the company now. Mm-hmm. It's called the Shaper Pro. And what it is, is it's a plunge router, but you upload G-code to it. And it reads – you have to put like tape down, special tape down on your, your surface of mm-hmm. your item. And it will guide you. Like you have to push it, but it will guide you. And uh, you can route designs or cut things out in specific patterns. It's pretty impressive. I know a guy who had one, or actually he still has it. And I could not believe – the technology that is in that thing. And that's why it's like almost three grand or two, two and a half grand or something like that. But you can put your, like your stock on your workbench, clamp it down and run the shaper. It's legitimately a bring it anywhere tool. As long as there's a power supply. So there's a uh, account on Instagram, the tall Dutchman uh, design. He actually purchased one of these and you can see on his page, the kind of stuff that he knocks out and does and uh, it's pretty good. Um, uh, it's very impressive what this thing can do. So it might be an alternative for anyone that has a really extremely small shop or space limited. So hey, what was our what was our patrons' answers? So Ducky Mystique, he said joiner, planer, and table saw. Let's see. Uh, Greg Wally, bandsaw, uh, bandsaw. It says tablets and lay. Oh yeah, like a like a uh, uh, tablet. Like an iPod, iPad. Oh, I, I don't know what you use that for. I'm assuming, I'm assuming that's what it means. Either that or pen and paper. I'm not sure. Oh, uh, and then Dave Snyder, he actually wrote in the question. Um, table saw, drum sander, and his laser. We have one more, by the way. Do we? At the refresh. We do. It was um, uh, Ed Cardona from uh, Oak Ridge Woodworks. Oh, uh, yeah. Let me uh, refresh the page here. Yeah, yeah, he must have just commented. It's a table saw, Merco Derosa six fifty and fan saw. <laughs> yep, there you go. So I laugh because Ed is uh actually runs an Instagram account for uh national abrasives and they sell uh Merco products. So it's it's a great lead into his uh secondary job there. With that, I do want to bring up one thing. Um and I forgot to do this during my shop. When I designed uh Wim Designs Mallet, he asked for a rounded handle. Now, I don't have a lathe, and it was incredibly difficult to get it round, so I actually reached out to the community. And Smash and Knife's Matt pointed me in the direction of Chris. Now, Chris lives not too far away from me, and he has a lathe, and I didn't know that this guy existed on base until, like, I don't know, a week ago. And, uh, I found him, asked him if he would give a hand, and he said he would. And while I was there, I was like, hey, man, do you have an Instagram account? And a lot of times when I ask that, you know, I'm expecting, you know, photos like I did in the beginning. Essentially, you take a photo of your project, you put it out there on your table saw or whatever, you take a picture, whatever. Now, I was very surprised when I uh, saw this guy's account. His account is Jones Workshop. And his pictures are works of art and the products he makes. 
So I just wanted to give a shout out and a big thank you to him because he helped me turn the handle, make that design possible. If you haven't, you should check out his Instagram page too. See what I'm talking about because <laughs> he makes some pretty cool stuff for just having a lathe and some of those tools he has. So it's definitely worth a uh, look-see. That's all I have. Do you guys uh, have anything else or do we want to wrap this episode up? Uh, I want to thank uh, a couple people or a couple a couple companies, uh, a couple organizations, I guess you could say. Um, not This isn't our sponsors yet. but um, So last week, right before we got on the podcast, I was uh, tuning into the Tiny Army. Um, they do like bi-monthly uh, live events on uh, Instagram. So I, I was in and I was watching – and I went ahead and ended up getting uh, involved with one of their giveaways um, just by happenstance because I was interacting. And all you have to do for the Tiny Army is to like follow, like or follow them uh, and then interact with them on their lives. And that, that automatically enters you into the, um, the giveaways. So – there's a, a couple of let me try. Okay, so I have Kaleida Stone Coastal um, on Instagram, and she was she does epoxy resin art. She was doing the giveaway that week, and um, so thank you to her um, for doing that. Check out her uh, check out her Instagram at Kaleida Stone Coastal, and she was giving away eye candy pigments, which are. I want to say the equivalent to like black diamond pigments. I don't know the quality yet. I'm still going to test them out, but um, I'm assuming they're really good because the work she turns out is, is absolutely beautiful. Um, and that's all she uses, but I candy pigments. I want to thank them for sending me some samples of their uh, three different pigment colors. So thank you to them. Um, check them out at I candy pigments on Instagram. That's all I got to say. That's a kind of a, Hey, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Awesome. Yep. Yeah, I don't got a whole lot to say other than this past weekend and honestly this week, even though it's only Tuesday. It's been pretty rough, but i definitely say thanks to, uh, well, not only my friends here, but all makers for uh, just being there when needed. That's really my big thing. Big thank you just because, uh, like, I know the Tiny Army, they focus on, like, the mental health stuff, like being able to talk to people when they're having issues. Um mm-hmm. But not only them, but just friends in general. I, uh, I'll tell you what, I was going to stew over what I was going through yesterday and not do anything. But then, you know, Nick invited me over. So that was good. So I, that, yeah. that's really it. I think that's why we, uh, we <laughs> not one of the reasons, but one of the many reasons we support the Maker Community Project. It's because like it is community over competition. Whenever anyone needs help or something that we can help someone else in the community, that's everyone steps forward. And it's very rare to find that in the woodworking community. I mean, it just seems like everyone is there to help each other. It's great that there's a uh, project out there that's helping support makers, you know, the tiny army out there for the other, the mental aspect. But I mean, keep in mind that, uh, you know, someone might be having a rough day. Just ask them how they're doing. Nap needed that next step forward. And I'm sure it helped a lot to just hang out, talk shop. Outside of work. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little different when you're outside of work and hang out and just, uh, I know when Nick was here and uh, there were some other workers here before they PCS, one of my favorite thing to do was to stop by and just talk shop because talking on Instagram or talking through social media is great. But when you can stop someone else's shop, and actually see what they're doing in different techniques and stuff like that. It is a great opportunity to learn and just not vent or whatever. And just, you know, see what someone else is working on. It, you know, it's important for us to do that because, like, it, it's a community. And, and as long as you're invited and everyone's okay with it, show up, discover something new, talk shop, and get out there. Because you never know what you're going to develop from it. So here's what I want to do for us, all three of us, all right? I want us to take the first project we posted on Instagram, all right? And I want to take one of our most recent projects we posted on Instagram, and I want us to mash them up together side by side, and then we'll post them on the Sawdust Nation podcast page 
uh, for everybody to see how progression goes, right? Basically, post something that you jacked up when you didn't know what you were doing and post something that you rocked right now, okay? That's all it is. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. I think it would be a great opportunity to uh, show you know, the progression in the last couple of years. Especially for us, you know, for, for our listeners to see how we have grown uh, just even by doing this podcast, it's helped, you know, because we all learn from each other. And I don't know, by the end of the week, maybe we should do a uh, our first shop layout and then what the sh- our current shop looks like too. Oh, I've got one of those. That actually is my first picture. Like literally my garage empty. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I, I, I mean, like, I think that's important to show, too, because, like, our shops didn't happen overnight. You know what I'm saying? It's something that we've progressed into. With that, uh, I think we should wrap this up and uh, toss it over to Nick with some sponsors. All right. Let's thank PWNCNC for their uh, amazing support of this podcast. They make these episodes possible. Um, Daniel over at PWNCNC is a mad scientist in his laboratory. He has developed this spindle kit for like the lower CNCs, like your Shapoko, your X Carve, your uh, Onefinity. I don't want to say lower, but the you know the little consumer versions, right? And they're they're phenomenal. Check them out. Ten percent off promo code Sawdust Nation, and you can order your spindle kit today. All you got to do is go to the website. If you have questions about it, just DM Daniel at PWNCNC on Instagram. He will get back with you. He is very responsive, and he doesn't he doesn't uh, beat around the bush. He'll give you the direct answer you need. And uh, next up, let's thank Total Boat. Uh, Total Boat is oh, what can I say? They're like kings of the epoxy world. They've got the best stuff, the best varnishes, and the best slow, fast, medium hardeners, deep pour, uh, wood fillers. They're killers. So check them out. Totalboat.com. For a ten percent off promo code of Total Boat, you're gonna have to uh, you're gonna have to woo us a little bit. Slide into our DMs at the Sawdust Nation podcast, and we'll hook you up. All right. And then, last but not least, JTEC Photonics. Thank you so much uh, for your continued support. Uh, check them out, JTECPhotonics.com, for that diode laser experience. Um, one more, I want to thank all the patrons for responding tonight. This past few days. You guys are awesome. We we want to thank you so much for supporting the podcast. There's a lot of behind the scenes things and even stuff that we do like giveaways and and whatnot because of what you do for us. So there's no no too big of a thank you for you guys. Um, we love you. And uh, yeah, with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Josh. So that was a quick sneak. look at our next peek. giveaway. Sneak if you're peek. Your Patreon, you'll see that. If you want to get a hold of all three of us, you can go ahead and do that at the Sawdust Nation podcast Instagram account. And to get a hold of us individually, you can reach out to Nick at MPG Creations, Nat from Naps Naughty Works LLC, and myself at North Country Woodworking. If you want to send us an email and make your entry into the contest we have currently going on, that's going to be uh, announced the winners on the 30th of November on our 75th episode. Go ahead and write in at sawdustnationpodcast at gmail.com. And you can also send us your current project, topic ideas, or questions. We love voicemails because we can play them right on the show and answer them as well. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and toss it over to Nap. But hey, so we talked about a lot of stuff uh, as far as makers and communities and sub-communities and projects and all this stuff. But I want to go ahead and give a shout out real quick to the Makers Community Project because well they were on a couple episodes ago, and uh, you know with this giveaways going away are going on right now. Not only the Stepcraft uh, CNC, but they're doing other giveaways, so it's not just that now. We got quite a bit going on over there. They're growing really fast. Uh, their support is just expanding uh, based on how we're all helping them out. Uh, so, but they've also helped us out in giving you all a five percent off discount on their uh, the Maker Community Project org. Or, which is SDN5 uh, with any order that you make through them. And when you make those orders, whether it be a sticker, or it could be a sticker or a flag like Nick has in his background. If you're a patron and you see that, uh, it's a pretty nice flag. Uh, hats, hoodies, shirts, and all that stuff. Uh, it doesn't matter. Whatever you order or buy, you're not only supporting a good cause, but you're also getting yourself an entry into their giveaways. So go ahead and do that uh, and support a good cause. But then also, if you're listening to us now on old Spotify and all that, that's great. But there's also the Apple Podcast. So another great 
uh, podcast catcher. If you do listen to that, go ahead and give us five stars. If you don't give us five stars, tell us why uh, we don't deserve five stars so we can make sure we procure the proper content for you uh, so you enjoy that five-star um, programming that you want so bad. Uh, but other than that, uh, that's what I got. Uh, last words, Nick? Uh, no, no. You, you're, you're the first one no. to give the last I wanna, I'm trying to change it up here, but okay, fine. So we talked, again, about a lot of different things. I think not only about like mental health, we talked about people being, well, you know what, it's on you know, Facebook or social media's period. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, take care of each other because it doesn't matter whether it's giving good criticism and actually doing it right and not being a complete you know what about it, um, whether it's uh, noticing that something's going on with a fellow maker or even just a friend. It doesn't even need to be a maker. It could just be anybody, really. Uh, and just checking on them, hanging out with them, making sure they're good, uh, because at the end of the day, you have no idea how much that helps in the end because uh, I definitely have gotten to uh, experience that firsthand. But other than that, take care of each other, folks. And I'm going to pass it on over to Nick. All right. You know me. Take care of yourselves and each other. And until next time, all you woodworkers, remember, Confucius say, it takes many nails to build a crib, but only one screw to fill it. Wow. That's a good one. I like it. (laughs) I mean, that's pretty PC. I mean, no, maybe. Yeah, I think we. Yeah, we're keeping we're, we're keeping that. I just don't <laughs> know what to fo- I don't know how to follow that up. Um, so if you know you're trying to build a crib, or you're in your kitchen, or your shop, or driving in your car, you could always turn us on, and we'll be whispering in your ear about how to make sawdust, the best tools to use, in a community over competition. We just love doing this. I don't know if you guys can tell or not. I mean, this is what our seventy third episode. But yep. uh, with that, I just got to say, keep making sawdust and sawdust nation. Oh. Confucius say, man with hand in pocket feel cocky all day. <laughs> Internet should enough. be taken away from you. <laughs>